If you're starting in your garden beds, you may be wondering what kind of soil prep do I need to do? And the truth of the matter is it depends on what kind of soil you're dealing with. So in this video, we're going to be looking at what to do if you're growing in soilless medium versus what to do if you're growing in soil, if you use mulch, if you don't use mulch, etc. and so forth. So let's jump into it. Step one of the entire process is actually removing the mulch. Yes, the mulch. So this simply means removing it from that section until you've fluffed the soil and planted everything in place. If you're going with starts you can actually put the mulch back in place right away if you're going with uh, seeds, I would actually remove the mulch, set it aside in a container, and then reapply it once everything's kind of grown up a little bit, usually around that two inch mark. Now, the reason for this is because mulch, it can be difficult for little seedlings to power through and actually see the light of day in. Um, the other reason for it is because in some cases, some mulches may contain compounds that will actually suppress seed germination. It's difficult to say what's in a plant-based mulch, whether or not, particularly with leaves, for example, if you're using those, or like a, a grass that's kind of different species or different varieties of grass. Again, very difficult to say. So I would actually just leave the mulch off to the side for the seed germination process. The only time I would remove the mulch entirely and actually compost it and not reuse it would be in the case of uh, a known pest issue a known pest issue and remember pest refers to insects fungal and bacterial problems so I had late stage blight in my tomato patch now this if you watched my blight video is of no concern in Canada and so therefore I can remove that mulch but in areas that I had for example flea beetle problem those ones that that mulch I did remove um, and compost it because that is a bug that will actually overwinter inside of that mulch. So behind me here is a bed of regular old soil. When I say soil, I mean mineral soil the earth is made of, not compost, not manure, and most definitely not peat. And mineral soil can compact over time, whether it's in ground, in raised beds, and even if you have a larger size container. And the key when growing anything, especially if we're doing potatoes or root vegetables, is actually breaking up that crust and decompacting it. So you can decompact it with something like a broad fork, a pitchfork, or a spade and shovel. Now you don't have to decompact the entire length or uh, surface of that soil. You only have to decompact around 12 inches. Now keep in mind, the decompaction process doesn't have to take place if you're able to simply just stick your hand in and grab a handful of soil. It's not compacted, therefore you don't have to decompact it. But if you are noticing a crust or a hard surface, then decompact it and when you do this, add in some compost or manure to help with the fluffiness of that soil in the future. You may need to do this a couple times if you have like a loam or you may need to do this several times if you have a heavy clay. Eventually, you will be able to have a fluffy soil where you don't have to decompact it. It just takes time. So yes, no dig has its benefits and yes, no till, I mean, just in general, is good for soil health, but you only have so many years to grow and I don't want you to become demotivated by heavy clay soil or heavy loam soil that actually doesn't allow your plant roots to thrive and survive. So decompact and thank me for it later. The other option, if you didn't want to decompact the entire soil structure up to the 12 inches would be to do the classic dig bigger than the root ball and then fluff up the soil in and around the root ball area and then plop it back down. Now, the only soil type that I don't advise doing this with would actually be a clay soil because the divot or the larger sized hole would actually end up like a pool or like a little bit of a pond that holds water and your roots would just be sitting in that every time you watered or it rained. So, that's one thing to keep in mind there. Now your next option is actually just a soilless medium. So a soilless medium can include compost. So classic no dig system where you're using compost. It could be manure, composted manure preferably. It could also be peat or potting soil. So this also goes for these larger sized containers such as this one right here. Now the key with these soilless mediums isn't necessarily decompaction as much as it is removing roots that are causing compaction. So that soil in general isn't overly compacted. 
And digging a hole so long as nothing was planted there the year before should be relatively easy to achieve. So the only thing I would really do is remove the really big root balls if there are any. That simply means grabbing whatever stems are sticking out, pulling them out, and then that will release kind of the compaction and the interweaving that's taking place there. And then you can loosen up by hand from that direction. The less you loosen though, the more moisture it tends to hold. The real key here is, in particular, if you're using soilless medium, is to make sure that the system is watered all the way through because there can be dead spots. So dead spots are essentially areas that are hydrophobic and won't take on water. And I see this predominantly in compost as well as in peat-based uh, potting soils. So really make sure it's fully saturated. And the only real way to do this is to decompact it and actually fluff it up. Um, otherwise you can end up with zones that are hydrophobic and it's less than ideal for your plant. It'll really, really uh, harbor or take down growth. But once everything's fluffed up at, at that 12 inch uh, limit where you're able to dig and actually move your fingers through that soil with no problems, you can then apply your fertilizer. So this can be in the form of manure, it can be in the form of compost, worm castings, insect frass, bone, bone meal, blood meal, and even granular fertilizers can be applied at this time. And same thing, you're just going to incorporate it into the soil in and around that 12 inch mark. Now what I will say here is don't overdo it when you're doing organics. Um, no, they do not burn, but yes, they can cause nutrient imbalances due to overapplication. So a good rule of thumb is about a half inch max for the entire garden bed, and then incorporating that into that first 12-ish inches. Now, you could top dress if you wanted to. Top dress is probably the least effective use of fertilizer because it will volatilize in some cases, uh, meaning gas off, and your roots need to come in contact with it. So the best way to put your roots in contact with it would be to incorporate it into the soil. But if you're really set on no dig or um, digging less, then what I would do is I would dig a hole, again, bigger than the root ball size, two to three times bigger than the root ball size, and then actually incorporate the compost, manure, whatever fertilizer, granular, into that zone, and then uh, plant, the, plant the plant up if you will. Once everything is done, it'll look something like this. Your mulch will be back in place. Your plants will be nice and happy. These ones are the ones that I grew from seed with you guys. I think on a live stream maybe. Um, and yeah, you're good to go. Happy planting. Happy long weekend if you're in Canada. I'll talk to you guys next time. The lungs hate me right now. The smoke is insane. That is, that's not rain clouds. The haze, that's not, that's not fog. That's literally smoke from forest fires. Oh, Oh, my husband locked me out of the house.